five. Are we all back? I, I'm hoping this mini lecture will be very mini. I don't think it'll take very long because there's not much to explain. Um, okay. So this piece lab is on natural selection, it's what we talked about last time. And I'm bummed because we can't, we're not doing this in person and it's like the most fun lab, at least students looks like have a really good time. And uh, essentially I'll explain it to you so that you know what all the numbers will mean and all the questions are asking about. We would go outside to a, the grassy area in front of the lab building and uh, simulate what happens in nature, <laughs> which is different birds attacking mice, different mice in the field. I think, yeah, mice, prey, whatever uh, the prey animal is. And essentially the different predators had different adaptations and so did the mice. So we, or the students, not me, are the predators. So you'd be the birds um, hunting mice and you'd have different mouth parts to represent different characteristics, different adaptations or traits uh, that these uh, birds have. And so I would give five or six students. So that group would be forks. I'd have a group that's spoons. Or the other ones. Forceps, so like those tweezer type uh, instrument, whatever. Uh, tongue depressors, so what a doctor uses, those like wooden sticks. Um, chopsticks is the last one. So we'd have different groups, and essentially um, I'd give you guys a minute, or first let me say, in the grass. I would scatter uh, a bunch of different colored uh, toothpicks. They were painted, different colored toothpicks. Uh, and actually, yeah, at Miracost it's toothpicks, right? Yeah. I mean, last time I did beans, I think, but I think it was because, yeah, toothpicks. Okay, so there were, uh, natural toothpicks, which were like the beige tan toothpicks. Uh, so toothpick, you know, little, little sticks. Red, painted red toothpicks, uh, green and black toothpicks. So again, we would be outside and there's a grassy area and there's 600 total toothpicks counted correctly, 150 of each color. 150 natural, 150 red, 150 green, 150 uh, black. And I would scatter them all out in the grass. And then you'd all have your mouth parts and a cup representing your stomach. <laughs> uh, and I would give you a minute to collect as many as you can. And it's super fun. You'd collect as many as you can in the cup and then we'd count them. And that would re represent the amount of mice that you consumed or ate, right? Uh, so we would count them, I would get the numbers, and then we could calculate from that the number that are still out there in the grass that survived, okay? Then there's this formula and we pretend that the survivors, there's this math formula and this calculation that I would do to figure out how many, uh, of the uh, survivors, um, or how many, how many new offspring there would be over time, right? So over maybe, I don't know, the next generation. Uh, so I'd have a number for each natural red, green, black of new offspring. I'd add those to the survivors already out there, and then we'd have a number, a new number of prey. And so we do another round and we do five rounds of minute long hunting 
collecting the numbers, doing the same thing. And I would record all the numbers of this, how many would be eaten by each predator, how many uh, survived, etc. cetera. Um, and I'd also be doing an, one more calculation, which is depending on the more successful predators, whether let's say it's the, the forks are really successful and they're getting the most, they're eating the most. Well, that's gonna mean that they're reproducing more and surviving more. Because if, let's say the tongue depressors are usually not as very successful because they're wooden sticks, they're hard to collect the toothpicks, um, there would be less of them um, in the subsequent rounds. And so they'd start to diminish. The numbers would go down of them, that predator, because they're not eating it enough and um, they're dying off. Whereas the forks are able to live and reproduce. So that number is changing over time as well. The number of predators as well as the prey. Um, that's the lab. So basically, um, I, uh, so, okay. Because during this lab, I'm usually doing all the math. Uh, it's just, uh, it's easier, I think, um, for me, for me to do it. So what I'm going to be doing is sending you guys. So I already sent you in today's email. I don't know if you saw. So I sent you the lab packets and you'll notice that the data are blank. So you'll, ha you'll have numbers, but the data for consumed survivors, all that stuff, it's blank. Um, so what I'm going to do is send you, and I, you know, I think uh, we are supposed to have you calculate uh, and fill it out yourselves. But to me, that's math, not biology. So it's not really necessary. So I'm just going to send you uh, this all filled out. And it's going to help you answer the questions. It's also, of course, going to help you graph. And that's the main, that's the first question. You're going to prepare uh, two graphs. Um, the first graph is on the summary. So you have the packet. So this, I won't use page numbers this time, but it's table five. So you're going to graph table five. So that's one graph. And then another graph is going to be table six. Table five is the summary of the changes in the prey population over the uh, five generations of doing this activity. Um, so the numbers are going to be changing for each of the uh, four types of prey. And depending on whether they're camouflaged into the grass more, there might be more of them surviving versus ones that stand out. They're less surviving. So you're going to have differing numbers here. And this is the table I want you to graph for the prey. And then you're going to do another graph um, representative of the predator changes. And again, I'm going to send you all these numbers. You can calculate it yourself, but again, that's math. So why? We're in biology. So I'm going to send you that. Uh, what else do I want to say? The type of graph. Uh, if it's a graph, so we, you learned about graph types when we did scientific method lab. So if it's a graph that's showing continuous data over time, what type of graph are you going to use for these two graphs? Two graphs, same type. Over time, continuous data. Yeah, line graph, um, exactly. So it's gonna look something like this because again, it, it's confusing because there's some categories. You have the different colored prey, different types of predators uh, over time. Uh, and you're gonna graph how much, um, how many, the number really, the number of prey, this is going to be the y-axis. On the y-axis, you're going to have the number of prey or the number of predators um, over each generation. So let me, let me show you an example from, I'll show you an example of a predator graph 
from when I did this uh, before. So it's going to look something, something like that. Again, you can you don't have to do it in Excel, uh, and I don't have a title. I should right, but this is the, and I did this in my other school. So there's different predator types, but um, uh, this is the predator graph, and this is what it would look like. Uh, so here's time generations, and the population size of the predators, uh, the different types. I color coded them. So we have these five types. And as you can see, the blue was less successful in getting food. So their population size went down. And these numbers, again, are going, I'm going to give you, and it would be in table six, these numbers that you would graph. But like I said, when we did the lab in class, I would figure out these numbers. So I'm just kind of pretending that's what we're doing. And you would do another graph that looks very similar, except instead of predators, it would be the different types of prey. And again, and those numbers are going to be in table five. So in tonight's email, I'm going to send you a filled out uh, table. Yes. Lorianne, so um, I sent you already the lab packets without the filled in numbers. Uh, but I'm going to send you the PDF with the filled in numbers so that you can uh, fill them in um, or just copy it over. It's math. It's uh, you, you take math class to learn math, <laughs> right? So you're mainly focusing on graphs, but there's also a good amount of questions uh, in the lab and the pre lab. But, you know, so like, for example, which prey color was least successful? Provide evidence to support your answer. Suppose a prolonged drought killed the grass, blah, blah, blah. So it's test ap application of natural selection, um, that kind of thing. But I want to promise I would keep it short tonight because I went a little over in lecture. And I feel bad. Um, so I think that's it. Um, yeah, I didn't. I don't think there's anything else I wanted to cover. So, does anyone have questions on the lab uh, or today's lecture? Anything at all? Otherwise, um, yeah, I don't think I have anything else to talk about. It's a fun lab. I wish we were doing it in person. <laughs> Assigned reading, I don't know why I word it like that. I probably because it can only help, right? Um, assigned reading on in the syllabus, it refers to uh, what we're covering in lecture. So it would be, but nothing that you're reading that I don't talk about in the lecture will be tested. That's, yeah. Okay. Um, I mentioned uh, Canvas lecture quizzes. We're, the first one's going to be on chemistry, and we start chemistry Thursday. So it won't be till the end of next week. And so I'll announce that again next week on, on Tuesday. But yeah, in the email I send tonight with this Zoom recording, I'll also include the completed PDF with the numbers filled out. Um, yeah, mention the graph. All right, I think that's it. So Thursday, we start chemistry. And uh, yeah, have a great rest of your evening. Email me with any anything that uh, comes up. All right. Thank you. Bye, guys.